Now we could move on to solving our problem, which was to determine all the possible permutations of the characters in a given string. This problem happens to be one of those problems where if I was to give it to you to solve it manually, you would have no issues to do that. But what we need to do right now is come up with a methodic process which will allow a computer to always solve such a problem and no matter how many characters are involved in a string. So what we're going to do in order to come up with that methodic process is we will observe ourselves solving such a problem manually. We will take a simple example, we will try to solve it manually and try to learn from it or reverse engineer from our solution some algorithm that we could implement in code. So let's take a very simple example. Say A, B, C. So a string involving three characters A, B, and C. Now we need to come up with all the possible permutations of this string of three characters. How are we going to do it? The way I would do it is I would identify the three positions of my output strings or my permutations. And then, and then what I would do is I would fix the first position to a certain character. So I would put A for example here. And then I would move on to the second position. For the second position, since I already chose A, I'm left with B and C. So I have two choices, either B or C. Suppose I went with B. Suppose I went down this path. I chose A and B. What's left for me in position 3 will be C. And similarly, if I chose C in the second position, then I'm going to be left with B for my third position. Now you notice that we've covered all the permutations for when A is fixed in the first position. Now let's move on to fixing B here. Now we fix B here, we have two possibilities for the second position. We could have either A or C. If we fix B and A here, then we are left with C in the third posi position. If we fix B in the first position and C in the second position, then the only permutation we have for the third position is going to be A. And similarly, we do the same process for C. We would have B here, A here, and then we would have A and B. So you notice how I went from fixing characters in certain positions and determining the permutations in the next position. This is the manual process. And from this process, I could derive an algorithm which will allow me to solve such problems at all times. And we're going to see how to do that, but I think you all appreciate how we went about solving this problem using some sort of algorithmic process. We set the first position, then we set the second position, and we were left with no choice but to set the third position to be one character, and so on and so forth. We did that for all the other possibilities, and we've covered all the different permutations of uh, the characters within that string. So we have A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, so I'm just reading out these paths, B, C, A, C, B, A, and C, A, B. Now, how many such permutations do we get? Well, in the first position, we have all three possibilities. We could choose either A or B or C. So we have three possibilities. In the second position, we only have two possibilities. So once we've chosen our first character, we are left with either B or C in this particular case. We are left with only two choices. So therefore, we would have two choices here. And in the last position, we always have one choice. Once we've picked our first character and second character, we will always have one choice in the last character, in the last position, so this is one. And so we have three choices here, we have two choices here, we have one choice here. To get all the different possibilities, you have to perform this multiplication, which comes up to be actually three factorial, which is six. And this is how many possibilities we have. At one, two, three, four, five, six. So the number of possibilities is n factorial, and n being the number of characters in your string. So now we've observed how we solve this problem, let's try to formalize it. Let's come up with an algorithm. So you notice how this is exactly what I've been doing. I chose my first character, and then I went on to obtain all the permutations 
with or having the first character fixed and this was the process right here then I chose my second character and then I went on to per to obtain all the permutations with the first and second characters fixed I fixed my first here and my second character right here so this would be getting to the third position in my tree that I drew up there and so on and so forth and this process you would do for every single character now when you study this when you look at these two steps that keep on coming up recurrently the first thought that comes to your mind is recursion this could be solved using a recursive algorithm and we will implement that in a recursive algorithm now there's just one more thing to point out before we move on when we talk about choosing characters we can't choose any of the characters in the string a b c when we're choosing the first character we could choose either a b or c but after we've chosen the first character suppose we chose a we can no longer choose a we have to choose either b or c so there's a set of allowable characters depending on which part of the recursion we are in and this we're gonna have to keep in mind so if we are in a second position in our algorithm determining the character for our second position what we're going to have to do is somehow determine that this character has already been picked and we could either pick B or C these are the only choices that we have so we could do that either by scanning previously chosen characters so we could scan the previously chosen characters or a more efficient way of doing it is having an array of booleans and each boolean would correspond to one position in the characters of the string so this character will have one boolean character uh, value this will have a boolean value and this will have a boolean value so we have an array of three booleans and once we pick one from the string, one character from the string, I'm just going to mark it as true. I can no longer pick this one. These ones are false, meaning I could pick them. They haven't been picked yet. The moment I pick another one, I mark it as true and move on in my recursion or in my process. So this is just to keep in mind. Now let's look at the algorithm. So in light of our discussion above, we will write out the algorithm, the recursive algorithm, that will solve our problem. This algorithm will assume that we have two things, and we will have to write a wrapper function or method which will initialize these two things. One, it will assume we have a string buffer. This string buffer will be as large as the number of characters we have, and this will allow us basically to fill it out with characters, print, and then remove all these characters and then fill it out once more with other characters and so on and so forth. So we will have the string buffer and then we will also have this array of boolean values and each cell will correspond to one character in a given string. So if the string was ABC this cell will correspond to A. When I set this to true then this means that that particular point A has already been picked. It has already been placed in the string buffer right here and we can no longer pick it anymore. And if it's false then we haven't picked it yet. So these are two things that I'm going to have to initialize in a wrapper method. And then this is the recursive method that I'll be calling over and over again. This is the base case. The base case says that after we've picked all the characters in a given string, after we've filled this string buffer, so after I've been through my three positions in the tree that I drew up there, so we had the first position, the second position, and the third position, so suppose I said A and then B and then C, after I filled out my buffer with A, B, and C, what I'm going to do is just print it out. This is the base case. The recursive case is handled right here. And the recursive case, what it does is it essentially it solves the problem that we described in my tree illustration up there. So what it's doing is that for every single character in the string, what it's going to do is it's going to check if it's, the character has already been used. So it's going to check that Boolean array. If it's false, that means it hasn't been used yet, and this is at the beginning will be the case for A, for example, then what we're going to do is we're going to place that character in current position. So we'll have a, an index called position, which will point at where we are in the string buffer. So in the beginning, this will be the state of the string buffer. It'll be all empty. And then I will take my A. A hasn't been used yet. It's false. I place it in the string buffer at position 0 and then I mark this character as used so I mark it here as true and then what I do is I perform a permutation on B and C so the the characters that are left 
given that the first character has already been placed. So I permute for the remaining character starting from position plus one. Position plus one meaning right here. So I'm going, the next character that I place, I place right here. And then this will call this once more. It will come here. We haven't picked all the characters, so it will go right here. For each character in string, it will start at A. A has already been used, so move on to B. B hasn't been used, so B we can place it, so we will go down this path. Place B right here. Mark it as true. So mark it as used. And then now we have these two set. Now perform permutation for the remaining characters, which is only C, starting from position plus one. So right here. And now that we only have one character left, it will come here, we'll check A has already been used, B has already been used, C is left. So since C is left, it will place it here. Mark it as true. And then it will call this once more. Now when we come here, we will realize that we picked all the characters. So we print this out. This base case will return, and we will start working our way up through the recursive calls and unmarking characters. So we will start unmarking characters, putting them false. It's as if we were working our way back through this tree, coming back to A, unmarking these as not being used anymore, and then starting and going to the next character in this for loop. So we will pick C this time, mark it as true, put C right here, and then go on to B, and place it here and then mark it as true and then print it out. So this will allow us to cover all the cases, this algorithm.